All right, welcome to the lesson on sleeping pads and sleeping bags. And I, again, I'm recording this so parents can see as well and they can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna talk about this sleeping pad first here on the, on the table. This is my, my, my preferred sleeping pad for a student who's coming on this trip. You can buy it at Walmart for $15.50, I think it is, $15.49. It is an air mattress that is quite durable. You'll get lots of great use out of it even after the trip. Uh, excellent for having a kid sleep over and blow it up. Uh, it will require a small pump. I have one here. We'll be bringing a, a pump like this along on the trip because there will be some kids who are using them. Uh, last trip, many of the kids even went swimming with their uh, sleeping pads during the day. Dried them out on the rocks, no problem, and uh, away they went. They have a, a more uh, canvasy type material on the top side and a more slippery uh, one on the bottom. They're made by Intex and they seem to hold up very well. We don't get very many leaks. Uh, a little uh, goop if we get a hole and you should be okay. Other options include other inflatables. This one here is rolled up. This is an inflatable sleeping pad, a little thinner. I can blow this up with my mouth so it doesn't require a pump which makes it a little more advantageous. The other one are these uh, self-inflating sleeping pads. This one here is rolled up. And uh, it, these are more money. You're talking $80 for both that smaller uh, pad at Mountain Equipment Co-op and or one like this. This one ha is called a, a 2.5 because it's one inch thick when it inflates. These are self-inflating. So they open up and inside they have a they will eventually inflate here once I get this open. And this will become a sleeping pad that you can then roll up and put back in the bag. Uh, I probably should store it uh, like this, not inflated. And uh, it appears not to be inflating too well. Push to unlock, I've got it unlocked. And I can hear the air slowly going into it. It might take a half an hour, but it will eventually inflate. A uh, little more expensive option, but if you're considering camping on a long-term basis, maybe not a terrible choice to make. All right, that's my sleeping pads. You can also go with the uh, blue foam sleeping pads. You can buy a Canadian Tire or various other folding ones. Uh, Walmart sells another one that folds up into a stack. I personally find that they all come to about the same size, maybe a little lighter than this one but they don't offer the same level of comfort. Uh, you'll find this way more comfortable to sleep on. And the nice thing about it also is that it offers a built-in little pillow, which a lot of the kids like. Sleeping bags, just to go to sleeping bags, I would uh, say that this is an inappropriate sleeping bag size to bring. The bag that's in here is not this big, but you will find plenty of sleeping bags at Walmart and Canadian Tire that are this large. They're fine for car camping, but when you start to get into wilderness camping, this is just simply way too big. The bag I have inside, I, I brought on purpose out. It is not, I could compress it down to a lot smaller than this bag and would be fine to bring. This bag is what we refer to as a mummy bag. It is a, got a tapered end so that it gets narrow at the feet and it's a little wider up at the chest. It has a nice hood on it. This is a perfectly acceptable sleeping bag. It would probably be rated for about minus five degrees and will keep you nice and warm. Personally, I find them a little restrictive. I don't like being in a mummy bag. It's a little too tight for me. So I'm gonna choose not to use it. Instead, I'm gonna go to a really light, small bag. And this is my sleeping bag I use most of the summer. And it's stored in my stuff sack that you're gonna see here turns into my stuff sack for my clothes. So this is gonna be my clothing stuff sack that's where I'm going to get all my clothes to fit in, and we'll do that in a separate video. For now, though, this bag here should come with a stuff sack of its own. Maybe I've misplaced it. And this bag is only rated, though, for about plus 8 degrees. It's not warm enough in some cases. And so I strongly recommend that uh, you consider a, a little bit warmer bag. Oh, inside here is the stuff sack for the sleeping bag. And I'm gonna show you how small this bag will actually stuff to. And this is really critical when you're going camping in the bush. We only have so much space to get so many things in. And this is a somewhat of a challenge, but about the size of two softballs, the sleeping bag will become. 
these are pretty good tents. I do notice that Walmart and uh, Canadian Tire do sell some lighter weight um, sleeping bags that go down to about plus eight as I stuff it in as it is called a stuff sack so I'm going to stuff and in goes my sleeping bag and here we go right compare that to what you just saw me holding there's quite a difference in the bag size I could probably put 10 of these into this thing and these work really well now in a cold cold night I might want to supplement it with this bag here and this is just a fleece liner this fleece liner will go inside my sleeping bag and uh, the neat thing about that fleece liner is they also design it with a fleece side on the outside this got a zipper and the whole works in it and it adds it doubles my size but if I don't feel I need it on a night I can leave it at home or if I'm going camping in the middle of the summer that sleeping bag is more than acceptable I don't need to bother bringing this at all on this trip I'll look at the forecast and if it's looking like we're gonna have some cool nights I'll bring my liner along but that's essentially what I'm gonna do is to go with these two the other option is just to simply put some clothes on put my long johns on put my sweater on put my fleece jacket on put my toque on and climb into this and I'll probably be fine all the way down to zero degrees and I can guarantee you we're not going to see below freezing temperatures in Algonquin. My other uh, sleeping bag I'm going to show you here, this one is a minus 10 rated sleeping bag. I'm not going to take it out of the bag, but you can see here, this is an acceptable size. It's probably about the same size as this bag and the fleece combined. And I would recommend if you want to have a catch all kind of sleeping bag at home, you look for something about this size, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. You can find them Walmart and Canadian Tire. Look for the temperature ratings on them. That's what's important. They, they tell you what rate they rate to. I would prefer to see kids get something around a six to zero, a zero to six degree bag. Don't go down to a minus five or minus 10. We're not winter camping and you're probably not going to either. Uh, it's pretty cold. And if you do, then you can always get an over bag or a liner to sort of drop the, give, give you a little bit more insulation and drop the temperature rating. Uh, this would be a uh, this 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 sleeping bag 20 years old and works great still these ones here the orange one I had out It's probably about 10 years old and we have four of them one for everyone in our family Hopefully that gives you an idea of what to look for if you don't own one Don't don't rush out and buy the most expensive look for something fairly inexpensive They're out there both Walmart and Canadian Tire are excellent places to go of course outfitters are okay And uh, you still can't find something or you don't have the money in your budget to do it just send me an email, talk to me. I do have some equipment and uh, if I felt uh, it was uh, in the right situation, I'll lend it out to uh, people. So uh, let's, uh, let's do this on the cheap and not spend a ton of money. All right.